For more on this, Ali Abunima joins me now. He is the director of Electronic Intifada. Net. Great to have you here with us on TRT World. Tell me, what do you make of this visit by Yoav Galant to uh, Washington? Did he get what he wanted? Israel won't get what it really wants, which is to find a way to turn its military defeat in Gaza and its defeat on uh, its northern border with Lebanon into a victory. And that's the reality that the Americans are trying to rescue Israel from without admitting defeat. Of course, when I say Israel is defeated, I don't mean that Israel didn't uh, murder and massacre tens of thousands of civilians and destroy Gaza. It did that. Uh, but anyone with that uh, amount of weapons can do that. That's not an achievement. Uh, but in terms of uh, its military uh, goals, Israel has achieved absolutely nothing in Gaza, nothing of the goals it set out. And in the north, its so-called deterrence strategy has totally failed, as Hezbollah has systematically dismantled Israel's military presence uh, and the threat Israel poses to Lebanon uh, on uh, the, the uh, northern front. Right, and one thing that really stands out for me from uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's statement is that uh, the U.S. is trying to de-escalate tensions between uh, Hezbollah and Israel diplomatically, does that perhaps indicate that the U.S. is engaging Hezbollah through diplomacy? It's certainly not doing so directly, but when uh, the uh, American envoy, he's actually an American-Israeli envoy, Amos Hochstein, goes to Lebanon and meets with such figures as Nabi Berri, the uh, speaker of the Lebanese parliament, who's a close uh, ally of Hezbollah, the Americans know that they're speaking directly to Hezbollah. And the message they will have heard from Hezbollah is the same one that Hezbollah leader Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah has been uh, making publicly, which is the only way to stop the escalating uh, situation in the north is to stop the American-backed genocide in Gaza. Hezbollah has made clear, just as the Ansarullah in Yemen have made clear, that their uh, actions, their military intervention is designed to support the Palestinian people in their resistance against the genocide. And that when the Americans stop the Israeli genocide, there will also be calm on the border with Lebanon. That's the message that the Americans have got. But importantly, I mean, what a contrast with 2006, when the Americans were actively encouraging and supporting Israel to invade Lebanon to try to destroy Hezbollah. The reason the Americans are not doing that now and saying, oh, well, you know, diplomacy is the only way, is because they know, the Americans know, that despite all of the massive amount of military assistance they've given Israel, Israel has completely failed in Gaza against brave resistance fighters who are much, much, much less equipped and more isolated than Hezbollah. Lloyd Austin, the U.S. Defense Secretary, knows that if Israel tries to invade Lebanon again, uh, it will be defeated even more soundly uh, than it was in uh, Lebanon in 2006, and that it has been by the brave fighters of the Palestinian resistance, the anti-genocide resistance in Gaza uh, have uh, have defeated Israel there, its tanks and its soldiers uh, militarily. Right now, Ali, when we talk about the ceasefire, it seems to me that the statements coming from the United States, especially over the last few weeks or perhaps last few months, they indicate that Washington is keen on implementing a ceasefire in Gaza. And as I understand, if there's one country in this uh, world that could uh, potentially help uh, with uh, reaching that ceasefire agreement, that's uh, the U.S. Uh, but uh, again and again, we are seeing that the U.S. Uh, is not able to persuade Tel Aviv to agree to a ceasefire agreement. So has the U.S. lost all its influence over Tel Aviv now? That's not exactly what the situation is. Cast your mind back uh, eight, nine months to the beginning of this genocide. When uh, the America, when uh, in response to the resistance action of October 7th, the Americans fully backed Israel in 
in, in waging genocide and revenge against uh, the whole Palestinian people. And when people were calling for a ceasefire as the atrocities mounted in utter horror, as children were being murdered by the dozens every single day, every hour, the people were saying, we need to cease fire now. Uh, the American government, President Biden himself said, no chance of a ceasefire. Why? Because as Blinken, uh, the Secretary of State said at the time, a ceasefire means a victory for Hamas. So now to climb down from the tree and for the Americans to impose a ceasefire, which they can do, or for Israel to accept a ceasefire, which they, they must do, is to admit defeat. So what they want is to try to make it look as if Hamas surrendered and Hamas lost by blaming Hamas for um, rejecting a ceasefire, which is not the case at all. It is Israel and the United States who are rejecting a ceasefire. What they want is for Hamas to declare surrender so that they can uh, try to spin Israel's military defeat and complete failure in Gaza to achieve a single one of its goals. It hasn't destroyed the military resistance. It hasn't destroyed Hamas politically. It hasn't uh, freed the Israeli prisoners of war and other captives. It hasn't achieved a single goal in Gaza, but they want to try to spin the Israeli defeat in Gaza as some sort of victory and some sort of Hamas surrender. That's the circle they can't square because there's no getting around the reality on the ground that every single day, the resistance with its limited resources is dealing devastating blows to this bloated, incapable, genocidal American-backed army, which is receiving more weapons from the United States than, than anyone else. And despite that, it's a complete failure. The myth of Israeli invincibility, the myth of Israeli uh, military capability has been utterly destroyed. And to admit that now by accepting the magnanimous and generous ceasefire, ceasefire proposals that Hamas has put forward and agreed to would be to publicly admit the reality of Israeli-American defeat in Gaza, uh, the, another defeat following their defeat, the American defeat in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Vietnam, every single American-backed war and, uh, and misadventure turns first and foremost into a catastrophe for the targeted country, Libya, Syria, uh, so many countries who've been victims of this. And yet, the, uh, it, it's also a political disaster for the United States and its client regimes, including, especially in the, this case, Israel, the genocidal darling of the West, which is being exposed as the monstrous, murderous regime that it is, and one that is totally incapable of defending and protecting itself. And you have to get the United States and its uh, its fleets and its aircraft carriers and all the other client states to rally around and defend this genocidal entity, which is wh whose only prowess, whose only skill is murdering civilians and destroying uh, schools, hospitals, homes. But when it comes to fighting on the ground against the resistance fighters in Gaza or the resistance fi fighters in Lebanon, it's a complete defeat. Ali Abdunima, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. I really appreciate your taking out the time.